Global warming, shrinking ice caps, a planet in peril. Well, there's something else to worry about. Powerful telescopes are showing scientists that the sun is the dimmest it has been for nearly a century. The lack of activity means that there are fewer sunspots or solar flares than usual. But what seems unclear is why the lull is taking place or when the sun is likely to brighten up again. The BBC's Palab Ghosh has more on the images sparking the speculation. If there's one constant in our world, it's the sun. But take a close-up look and it's a different picture. This is an ultraviolet picture of the sun taken in 2001. Look at its boiling, turbulent atmosphere. And these bright areas are regions of solar flares. Now compare that to a picture taken just this week. Hardly any activity at all. It's the quietest that the sun has been for nearly a hundred years. In the late 17th century, a quiet spell lasted 70 years, which led to a mini ice age. It's led some to suggest that a similar cooling might offset the impact of climate change now. But scientists say that this current minimum activity by the sun may well be short-lived. The first point to make is the fact that we don't know when the solar minimum will disappear. When does the activity start coming back? It could be tomorrow. We have no idea. But, but secondly, if these are issues we have to sort out, we really have to sort them out now. There's now evidence that the sun has been dimming since 1985. And that's not stopped the rise in global temperature caused by the burning of fossil fuel. So scientists think that the current quiet sun is unlikely to save us from global warming. Palad Ghosh, BBC News. Despite the sun's quiet spell, some scientists are warning about the opposite, a very unquiet star. Solar storms have the potential to cut off power and seriously disrupt the many sources of technology that we've become to depend on. For more on the potential danger and what can be done to prepare, I spoke a brief time ago with Michio Kaku. He's the author of Physics of the Impossible. Professor Kaku, thanks for coming on the program again. Should we be scared of the sun? Yes. Uh, every 11 years, the sun throws a temper tantrum and unleashes a solar tsunami throughout outer space. In a worst-case scenario, I repeat, worst-case scenario, Property damage could be over a trillion dollars. Power could be wiped out through most of the continents of the world. Billions of dollars in property damage throughout many cities. And there could be food riots, uh, collapse of what we call Western civilization may take hang place. On. Hang on, Professor. Are you really trying to scare us here? I mean, is this seriously a possibility? That's right. NASA and um, the scientists in this country are taking this very seriously. You see, we are very young in the space age, and every 11 years, the sun flips the North Pole and the South Pole, releasing a burst of solar energy. So far, we've dodged the bullet, but we're very young in the space age. In 1859, all hell broke loose when we had telegraph wires. Telegraph wires were pretty much wiped out because of this gigantic solar storm 150 years ago. If something like that were to happen again, when we have hundreds of satellites, tremendous power grids around the world, it could cause untold havoc. And again, that's a worst case scenario. We expect that in the year 2012, 2012, there could be more solar activity because that coincides with the next sunspot cycle. Yeah. Chances are nothing will happen, but we have to be prepared for a solar tsunami. Oh my goodness. Well, I'll start tonight, quite frankly. Is there anything we can do about this other than drinking ourselves into a stupor? NASA scientists have laid out many things we can do. First of all, we should start to have backup systems and our power grid should be reinforced to handle outages from outer space. In 1989, power in Canada was partially disrupted because of a solar storm that took place. Our satellites have to be reinforced and we have to make sure that our communications network especially remain intact in case of a worst case scenario. Now the lesson of Katrina, for example, was that the inevitable inevitably happens. And we were unprepared for Katrina, though we knew it could happen. Now NASA is aware of the fact, uh, reports are now being issued by many scientists saying that it's good to be prudent in case at some point in the future a worst case scenario happens like in 1859. We are well into the space age now and now is the time to reinforce our satellites and power grid. Okay, well we'll have to end it there, but solar tsunamis is definitely something else for President Obama's in-tray. 
Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Professor. Thank you. Thank you.